Okay, um, I want to ask a, a few general questions before people pop out with answers. I want you to kind of look at the scene again uh, that's in front of you in preparation for answering um, the question. The first thing I'm going to ask is just sort of a, a general question. And again, I want you to look to see as many things that you can see actually in front of you that might um, answer this question. And that is simply, what evidence do you have in front of you that this has been a glaciated area? So kind of look around. Spend some time and think about what you might actually see there as evidence for glaciation, past glaciation. It's not glaciated right now. That's a hint. <laughs> continuing theme with my son. I haven't been to a glacier yet. I need to go there before global warming. <laughs> okay, let's start with Juliana. Um, Tell us what you see. That valley down there yeah. has like really sharp edges. So maybe speak up. the valley down there has really sharp walls. So maybe which valley? Um, Take a look. This one right down here. Cut, yeah. Yep. That's good. Um, and then um, these rocks are seem to all be small rocks that are jumbled on top of each other as opposed to big outcrops like we've been looking at before. Okay. Um, the, the feature that you see in front of you is mainly just due to weathering. Just due to weathering. Okay, so you're, you're trying to suggest that maybe this was sort of like that moraine or, or something like that, but that's not really the case. Here it's just, the blocks are just due to kind of uh, a high elevation and how this particular rock is actually weathering part. Okay. It does tend to bring in blocks like this. Yeah. Because there are um, there are these cracks in the rocks. Do you see behind you? Uh -huh. and those cracks are called um, joints. Joints. So in this case, there are big joints, and they kind of break these big blocks apart. Okay. Okay. Water gets in there, freezes, uh, contracts, and basically can push things apart over time. Tends to make these big big blocks kind of come out. So this is just kind of a recent. A weathering feature. Okay. But remember, these joints are still important because they're telling us something about the past stress field. Uh huh. Um, in this case, you see many that are actually kind of horizontal. Yeah. So they're both, again, this is a pressure release feature. Okay. Okay, but that's mainly why we have those blocks. However, that steep valley is a very good point there that you're actually seeing something that maybe is sculptured by ice. Okay. All right? Yeah. Okay. Levi? First thing I see is the the mountains in the distance are sharp, and they look like horns. With uh, you can see some cirques in there. Right. Okay. So you're seeing horns in the background. Everybody see them? Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing is there's kind of a general trend where you have ridge lines that are kind of running parallel. And I thought that looked like you had glaciers advancing and scooping out stuff and leaving really large scale arete sort of things. Um, what else did I see? I noticed when I was looking that way that you can see a lot more exposed rock on the southern faces of the smaller hills. And these are bigger hills, it looks like, and you don't see as much exposed rock. And I didn't know if that would be a preferential scraping as the glacier's moving down to what I assume it's going to be moving south. Scraping, or I didn't know if that was uplift related. No, that's just more lo little local climate okay. and changes. You won't really see things preserved on, on those time scales. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, mostly I saw the, the shape of the mountains over here and then the, the parallel ridges and valleys. Okay. And they were kind of, they weren't sharp V shaped. I know rivers will make a V shaped. They cut a V-shaped valley, whereas a glacier will kind of cut a U-shaped. Yeah. Valley. So you guys know this, obviously, but uh, from having a little bit of geology, and, um, 
in the earth sciences, that's sort of one of the tenets that you know about glaciation versus uh, an mm -hmm. area that's mainly affected by a river. Okay. Uh, a valley will be V-shaped. It's if a, r a river is cutting down through down through it, mm -hmm. it's V-shaped in cross section. Whereas a, a U-shaped valley, like Yosemite Valley in California, is a classic glacial valley. Okay. Okay, and that's another um, uh, thing to look at. So do you see do you see the evidence for that here? Of U-shaped valleys. Um. I can't see the bottom of that one. <laughs> It's kind of hard to see the, 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 the bottoms of them, but if you, um... And, oh, right there, yeah. that one. Yeah, sort of right in there. There's a bowl in there. The, there's a big, broad, U-shaped valley right in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, the highest peak that you see, in kind of in front, following my finger there, the highest peak is Mount Marcy. Okay. Okay, the kind of broad dome. Everybody see what that is? To the right of the horn. Right, there's a sharp uh, one. Right, to so the right, right of the horn. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, if we follow um, kind of way along the way, there's another high peak. Yeah. Like that's Algonquin Peak. You know, in, in between there, there are a series of U-shaped valleys. Okay. But the one, if you go past that next high one down, yeah. then it looks like a V. Um, like there's that little... It looks like a V because um, there, there it has actually... What, one of the things you have to be careful in glaciated areas, or making this distinction, is that you have to always keep in mind deglaciation. Okay. So that you'll have a V-shaped, U-shaped valley, and then there'll be a river later on. That oh, because it melts it or... And recut it through it. Okay. So you actually are seeing a, shape, a, a sharp gorge there, but it's mainly glacial, but then we've had a river cut through it again. Oh, okay.